Good afternoon. Welcome to Cosumnes River College's weekly series, CRC Music in the Studio. My name is Kurt Erickson. Today I'm pleased to welcome and to introduce Dr. Lisa Beebe, Professor of Music here at Cosumnes River College. Uh, today her talk is called Making Your Own Podcast. Lisa, welcome to In the Studio. Thanks, Kurt. I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> We're happy to have you. Awesome. Super excited to talk about podcasts. One of my passions. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to be taking a lot of notes. <laughs> Great. Um, so welcome, everyone. I'm so happy you're here. I'm going to go ahead and just jump right in. I have a little slide show to share with everyone today. Um, if at any point you have questions, please go ahead and ask them either in the chat or in the question and answer um, tab on the bottom of your screen. Uh, we'll be checking those periodically, so feel free to jump in. Um, but without further ado, let's talk podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, so first of all, just a quick overview of what we're going to talk about today. Um, first of all, what is a podcast? <laughs> Good place to begin is at the beginning, and why why should you make one, right? Um, and second, um, a little content plan. What would your podcast be about, right? Um, we're going to talk a little bit about collaboration, so researching, developing, and networking for your podcast. We'll talk all things technology. I'm going to do a quick demonstration of Anchor, which is a free podcast app you can use to make your own podcast. At the very end, we have a very special treat. Um, we'll have a student panel, some of my students who have made podcasts in my courses before, and we'll have a little question and answer to talk about their process. Awesome. Um, so before we get the ball rolling, I wanna check in with everybody and really hear from you why you're here and what you're hoping to get out of today's presentation. So in the chat, we're gonna have a link to a Google form um, if you can, please go ahead and click on that link and take a quick poll. It's just a few questions. And then I'll be able to see your responses in real time. So I just want to get a sense of why everybody's here today, what you're hoping to get out of this presentation, um, and also what types of podcasts you're interested in. Mm. And there's a lot of good ones. A lot of good ones out there, aren't there? There are a ton, and they're on every topic under the sun. Yeah. <laughs> Possibly random. Um, yeah. Awesome. Great. Thanks, everyone. So while you're taking that poll, I'm going to keep an eye on the responses. Um, just for the sake of time, I'm going to move on to our first topic. OK, so what, what the heck's a podcast? Right? Um, well, first of all, the word is a portmanteau. When you take two sections of two different words and smush them together to form a new word. Um, so podcast is from iPod and broadcast. Um, a podcast is really similar to a radio show. It's a digital audio file that you can either stream online or you can download onto your device. Today, almost everybody can have their own podcast, right? And it can be as simple as you make it at home using your phone to the other end of the gamut, recording a podcast in a professional studio, right? Um, where do you go to hear podcasts? Um, some folks find them on Apple or Google Music. Um, there's Stitcher, Spotify, all kinds of different places. Right? Um, usually podcasts are free. Sometimes they're ad supported. Um, and occasionally, um, podcasters will have subscription options. So maybe there's like an extra bonus episode. So you can subscribe, you pay a little bit to the podcast and you get that bonus content. Um, there's also something called Patreon where you can support artists that way. And I'm seeing so many responses popping up into the Google form. It's exciting. Lots of people here who want to make their own podcast. That makes a lot of sense. 62% um, of you have never made your own podcast before, so you're in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, at least half of you, and the number is growing, currently listen to podcasts. So, very exciting. 
Awesome. So what are podcasts about? Um, this is something that Kurt and I were just talking about before <laughs> we started today. The short answer is everything, right? You can have a podcast about anything. Um, just some ideas. Podcasts can be about politics, social justice, current events, um, sports or entertainment. And we'll drop a link in the chat. The Connection, CRC's newspaper, just did an article about a local podcaster in Sacramento who's trying to bring attention to local athletes and local artists. Right? Mm. So um, what I kind of want to do now for fun is if you have the capability, do a quick Google search, right? Open another window or grab a device and just type in the search bar podcast about something that interests you, right? Podcast about cats. <laughs> podcast <laughs> about, I'm just looking around my room. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Is that your favorite beverage? Right. Podcast about uh, home decorating. And let us know in the chat what you find. Okay. So share the podcast you come across just through a quick Google search. Hmm. Anything good? Wow, there's a lot of music ones. <laughs> I, um, my Google search was I podcast about Star Trek, and there are a lot of <laughs> about Star Trek. Okay, so, yeah, folks, go ahead and put this in the chat. Ah, sewing. Wow, cool. Podcast about mental health. Mm. Awesome. Society for a sewing podcast. Okay, that's the coolest title. Uh, I think they win. I don't know if it's a contest. But if it was, they won. <laughs> Gardening. Yeah. You can get my podcast about anything, right? So if you're asking yourself, why should I make my own podcast, right? If there's so many out there already. First of all, everyone has a perspective to share, right? Um, or we have the ability, we have unique skills that we can use to help other people share their stories. So we all have something unique to contribute. Um, and along with making your own podcast, maybe you're saying, well, I don't really want to record my voice. Right? I don't like the sound of my own voice. Um, there are many possible roles along with content creation, right? There are a lot of different jobs to fill. So maybe you have technical skills. Uh, maybe you're a really great creative director. Maybe you're a solid pro uh, project manager. <laughs> maybe you're really awesome at getting people to actually do the things they say they're going to do, right? So use your skills, use your talent. Creativity is good for you, right? Making something makes you feel good. Um, and then another idea, just throwing this out to any CRC faculty or who happen to be at this uh, event today, podcasts are a great class assignment. Um, it's a creative and an interactive way to share what you've learned, right? It's a great way to kind of synthesize information in a fun and entertaining way. Um, so I actually got the idea from another instructor to um, have podcasts as an assignment in my music history courses. And I've been doing this on and off now for about two to three years. And it's super impressive. Often when I ask students to make a podcast, the first response is, that seems hard, or I'm interested, but how am I gonna do this, right? And we're always so blown away by the end result. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful alternative to you know, just the traditional writing a research paper um, and turning it in. So throwing that out there, one, one great idea. Um, yeah, Lisa, let me, I, 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 let me just, I want to confirm that too. I, I love using yeah. podcasts uh, for different assignments. You know, I think, you know, when, when people want to write on a topic or write a textbook, you know, it takes a really long time for that to happen yeah. or even a, a journal article, but someone can, can create an interesting podcast mm -hmm. with a relatively short turnaround time. And, you know, you can add all sorts of music and effects and it can be much more effective yeah. than, you know, and sometimes it's needed to have another voice from mm -hmm. you know, just another instructor voice. Um, I, I, I find them really useful in the classroom. I really do. Yeah, and that's a great point too you brought up about, um, you know, traditional media like textbooks, sometimes it can take a really long time for a new edition to come out. And we 
find this in popular music all the time, right? Yeah. Maybe the book ends in the 90s or it yeah. ends in 2007. Yep. Um, so podcasts are a great way to get that information out there now. Yep. Yeah. So we've got the what it is and we know why. <laughs> um, let's talk about how to actually make your own podcast, right? And if it sounds like a cool idea, but you're thinking, how would I do this? I'm gonna to try to break it down into five easy steps. Um, so finding your topic, doing your research, creating an outline, making your plan, um, recording your content. And then the last step is you pop your podcast and you share it with the world, right? You did the thing. Um, so it's not actually that difficult to make your own podcast. Um, so really quick, I'm gonna talk us through each of these steps. Um, so first of all, how do you find a topic? Um, just a few suggestions. First of all, one idea is you can do what you know, right? So you can share your specialized knowledge or skills. Um, maybe you are super good at digital audio production. You can create a podcast to share your skills with others. Um, maybe you want to have a podcast where you ask questions, right? You really want to bring out different voices. You could create an interview series. You could have your podcast be centered all around one theme, right? So maybe you love horses. That's what your podcast is going to be about. Um, you can also think about solving a problem, right? So maybe you want to raise awareness for an issue or you want to create content where that content is needed. So think about right now, right? We're all still in shelter in place. Um, and there's a need for educational content for teachers to use in their virtual classrooms for parents, right? Maybe you create a set of podcasts that can address that need. So when you're thinking about your topic, you're gonna wanna consider who's your audience, who are you trying to reach, and what's your purpose, right? So just some ideas. So just as a quick example, um, two things that I love I love music and I love science fiction. So I've had a dream for a while now to make a podcast based on this theme. And my idea is that each episode would be about a different medium, like a TV show or a film um, or a particular universe like Star Trek or Doctor Who, um, or maybe an author that I really like. And I've been brainstorming some title ideas for a while now, right? So that's just like one topic example. Um, you can go ahead and let me know in the chat what your topic ideas are, I'd like to hear. So then I was thinking, okay, well, I need to research this topic, right? I know a lot about music and a lot about science fiction, but um, now how do I want to think about this? So it's always great as a first step to learn more about your topic from some reputable sources, right? Want to make sure you pick sources with good information so you're not furthering incorrect info. You also want to do your market research, right? Are there any podcasts that are similar to your idea? And that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it, but you want to get a sense of, first of all, what their title is. So you want to make sure you don't replicate a podcasting topic same title. Um, also take a look at, you know, what's their format, right? Um, what are kind of key words that they put in their description? Um, then you can think about, are there any potential guests or collaborators? So for my project, I'm going to call every music and science fiction nerd that I know, right? Um, and then you can think about what are the resources you wanna to provide to your audience? Um, what do you want them to leave your podcast knowing? Or maybe you wanna make sure you're getting information to them, right? How are you gonna organize that? So some ideas to think about. Um, so for example, I thought it'd be really cool if I had a music and science fiction podcast called Strange New World. And I did my research and it turns out there's already a podcast with that name. Um, so I had to like go back to the drawing board and think of some more ideas. Um, I started building myself a bibliography. Um, I went to one search in the library webpage, shout out to the library, right? Um, so I was like, <laughs> yeah, always. Thank the librarian today if you haven't, right? So um, I started contacting potential guests. If you're one of my friends and you're a music and sci-fi nerd and you haven't heard from me, check your inbox. Um, and I also spent some time listening to similar podcasts. So there's a podcast about science fiction, not just about music. Um, it's called Our Opinions Are Correct. 
and I really like this podcast. I've been listening to some episodes to get some ideas, right? Not that I'm going to copy what they're doing, but um, it kind of gives me some ideas for how I want to structure my podcast. Hmm. All right, so then it's time to outline your first episode. Um, and with your outline, it's totally up to you. You can be as detailed or um, you know, as flexible as you want. You just wanna decide how you want your first episode to progress, right? So what do you wanna share first? Maybe make yourself a little outline or a flow chart. Are there some things you wanna gonna, um, script, right? Where you're just gonna read it off. Maybe when you have a guest, going to be a bit more free form to think about that you can also start to think about what sort of sound effects you might want um, what types of transitions so just some things to think about um, with nuts and bolts so for my first episode of my science fiction podcast um, I scripted an introduction and I found some audio to have in the background um, someday I want to have theme music for now I'm, going to, I'm using Anchor, which I'll show you all in a second. Um, I borrowed some of their theme music. Someday, I'm going to try to um, convince one of my composer friends to write theme music for me. Um, it's going to cute, Kurt. Uh, <laughs> so, you know. I felt your eyes in my direction. <laughs> Maybe a little theme song or some music. Um, let's do it. And yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. So that's something I would have in like every episode and then I could just build my new content around it. So my first episode, I decided um, it will be about Forbidden Planet, which is a 1956 classic science fiction film, the first to have an all electronic music score. Um, so I decided, yeah, I think that would be a great one. And I'd start with a film synopsis, I think. Mm. It'd be a good flow. Um, I'll show you all this in a second. So now let's kind of think about some of the nuts and bolts, right, of actually recording your podcast. So how are you going to create and organize your audio files? And how are you going to produce a podcast? Um, so first of all, you have lots of options. And you can be as low tech or as high tech as you want. When it comes to microphones, um, I have a microphone now, but before I did, when I would work on audio projects, I used a microphone on my phone. It's not going to win me a Grammy, but it got the job done, right? So use what you have, um, laptop, tablet, phone, earbuds, headphones with microphones, mm -hmm. totally works, right? Um, when it comes to recording software, you can use the voice memo feature on your phone or on your tablet. Um, VLC player is free software you can use. Other programs are GarageBand or QuickTime. You can also record directly in Anchor, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Um, if you really want to learn more about the hardware and software for recording, you should check out Dr. Derek Keller's in the studio presentation, mm. the first presentation that kicked off our series. And thanks, Gabriel. Gabriel in the chat, he just dropped a link to the YouTube recording um, of Dr. Keller's presentation. So yep. go ahead and check that out. So when it comes time to produce your own software, you have lots of options, um, almost an overwhelming amount, right? So here are just a few. Um, one option is you can use GarageBand. The pro of GarageBand, if you've never used it, it's pretty easy to use. It's relatively intuitive. Um, the only downside is it is limited to Apple. So if you don't have a MacBook or an iPad, um, there's that limitation. But if you have access to GarageBand and you're already familiar with it, that's a solid option. Um, there are some other alternatives. The two I've thought of here are Audacity and Reaper. Um, Audacity is free open source software you can download. Um, Reaper you have a free 60-day trial. Um, then you can decide if you want to purchase it. It's only $60 if you're a student um, or if you are using it not for commercial purposes. Um, Audacity and Reaper have a ton of really useful features. However, there's a steeper learning curve um, for both of these programs. 
But if you're already familiar with or you're learning how to use um, a DAW as a digital audio workstation, if that's already your jam, go for it. That might be the ideal option for you. Now, Anchor is a perfect middle of the road, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. Um, Anchor is free, pretty easy to use. There's both a web-based and a mobile version of the app. Now, the drawback is it does have some limited features, but for most folks who just want to get their podcast done and out into the world, um, it can be a really great option. So that's why I've decided to share Anchor with you today. Um, so just some of the basics of Anchor, in case you haven't heard of it before. Um, it's a podcast making app. There's also a web version you can access in your browser, works in all browsers. Um, Anchor is owned by Spotify um, as of last year. It allows you to record, you can also upload audio files and you just drag and drop to arrange them in order. So it's pretty easy. Um, you can add music, you can add special sound effects. Anchor has its own built-in audio library. You can also add up to 30 seconds of music from Spotify and Apple Music libraries. And you don't need to have an account with either of those platforms to do that either. So that's another option. Um, when you publish your episode, when you share it with the world, you can just keep it on Anchor. There's also an option where Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. So it'll put it on all these different platforms where people go to find podcasts. Um, so it's a really great way to get your podcast out there. Um, again, so they're on the web at anchor.fm if you'd like to check them out. Um, so just real quick basics of how to get started with Anchor. It's relatively intuitive. Um, you can either go to anchor.fm and use the web version, or you can download the app on a device. Um, you should review the terms of service always, right? Um, and then you can create an account. Once you create an account and you log into Anchor for the first time, you're going to see this welcome screen where it says, hey, make your first episode, right? Let's do it. Um, you can also go into the settings. You can decide what your podcast is going to be titled. So lots of flexibility. Um, but pretty much you can start working right away. So I'm going to show you all these features in Anchor. But again, just to go over them really quick. Um, Anchor allows you to create or import audio. You can record it or you can upload it. You can build an audio library. So for my podcast, I can start to, as soon as I've created them, upload my audio file. Um, you can also explore Anchor's sound library. And it's really easy to just drag and arrange audio files into your episode. Um, so I'm going to show you all today the um, web-based version of Anchor. The mobile version, I just made a really short video of myself using the mobile version. They're basically the same, um, but there are some slight differences. The mobile version, for some reason, I don't entirely know why, the mobile version has some extra features that the web version doesn't have. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just share um, this mobile version of Anchor with you. Okay, so now I'm gonna use Anchor on my phone. I already have the app downloaded, and since I've used it before, I'm already logged in. The last episode I'm working on is what pops up first. So to use the various tools in Anchor, I'm gonna hit the big purple plus sign, and then here I can tap record to directly record audio into Anchor. I can upload a voice message. I can take a look at all the audio in my library. I can add interludes. Uh, this is a unique feature to the app version of Anchor. I can add different sound effects if I want, like a bling sound. Fun. Um, and I can also add music from Apple Music or from Spotify, Spotify Premium. So since I'm going to do Forbidden Planet, I'm going to search for music from that film. And I didn't find what I was looking for, so I'm going to search again by the composer's names.
and I found it this time. So here's the soundtrack to Forbidden Planet, and I'm going to um, add the main titles into my podcast so I can preview it by pressing the play button. <laughs> That's what I want and then I just hit plus to add it to my episode okay one other unique feature of the Spotify app for your phone or for a tablet is that it allows you to record with another person so the way that you do that in the upper right hand corner you'll see there's an icon with two people and a plus sign if you hit that button It'll allow you to invite friends. And if you have friends on Anchor, you can do it that way. You can also invite a friend through a message, um, through Facebook, Twitter, or you can copy a link. So for example, if I wanted to um, record a conversation with Gabriel, he's a composer who knows a lot about electronic music, I might hit messages and then this link will pop up and then I could send this text to Gabriel and then we could um, talk like, just like we were talking on the phone and it would be recorded into Anchor. So those are some of the unique features of using the mobile app version of Anchor. Cool. Um, one thing I will add about if you add music from Spotify or from Apple Music, it can limit your publishing options because of copyright. Um, so for example, on my podcast, since I use the clip from Spotify, Anchor will only distribute my podcast to Spotify. Um, so I can either send people to the Spotify link or I can send them the Anchor link. Um, and that's something to think about if you think you're gonna be incorporating a lot of music and you wanna widely distribute your podcast, um, you wanna consider copyright issues um, and how you might address those. So let's take uh, Anchor for a test run, <laughs> excited. Um, so I'm gonna switch over to Anchor and I already got a few things going for today. Um, so I made a draft version of my episode. I ultimately decided since my original idea was taken that I would name my podcast Strange Sound. I thought that sounded kind of fun. Um, so I'm working on episode one, which is Forbidden Planet. And I can see that this is a draft. Um, no one else can hear it yet, so I can work away. Now, once I po uh, publish my podcast, I'll be able to see episode analytics here. So who's listened to my podcast um, and that kind of information. But for now, I'm just gonna go to edit audio so I can keep working. And here's everything I have so far in my podcast. Um, you can record audio directly into Anchor. So you just make sure your input is the microphone you want. Click start recording, stop when you're done. It automatically then um, is imported into your sound library. So here's all the files I've recorded so far um, using Anchor, Anchor's record feature. Um, one thing I'll say, do your future self a favor and label all your files. Um, so you remember what it was, right? Yeah. It automatically just saves <laughs> the day and time. <laughs> Your future self will thank you. Um, there's also this transition feature where if you want to have like little fun sound clips, right? The fun transition. Um, this is a neat feature. Isn't that cool? Yeah. There's right. this messages feature. I've never used this. Um, you can share this with your listeners so that they can like, quote unquote, call in to your podcast. So you could say, hey, next episode is gonna be about this topic. Um, if you've got some information you wanna share, then they click on that link and then they can record themselves and then you can choose to feature them in a episode. Um, that's pretty fun, I haven't used that feature yet. Um, and then once you have your audio files, it's really easy to add them into your podcast. You just click on it, drag it, and drop it in. Um, and then if you wanna rearrange the order of your podcast, again, you just click on that little rectangle and you drag it around to where it is you want to go. Um, one other cool thing about Anchor is you can add background music. 
So I recorded an introduction to my podcast and it's just me talking. But if I want to have it sound a little bit more fun, a little more polished, um, you can add background music. And to do that, you just click on the well, two eighth notes and a plus sign. Um, and then you have access to Anchor's sound library. So they have all kinds of like different music clips organized by mood, right? So it sounds fine, on Forbidden Planet. I was like, I'll have an electronic sound. Um, but maybe you want to have a podcast that sounds cheerful. So maybe you want to have um, the glass beads background music. Inspirational, right? Um, or maybe you're trying to sound whimsical. <laughs> so you can choose darn that weasel. Uh, you can preview it with your audio. You can adjust how loud it is. And once you get it just perfect, all you do is hit apply and then it's done. Your background music is there. Um, you can always preview what it sounds like by just clicking on play. So here's my intro where I added background music. Hello, and welcome to the first ever episode of Strange Sounds, a podcast about music and science fiction. I'm your host, musician and nerd, Lisa Beebe. Today's episode... Um, and then I decided I wanted, little, I added that clue transition sound. I made another um, audio clip. And then here I added music from Spotify into my episode. I did that on my mobile device and it automatically synced when I logged in on the web. Um, and then if I wanna go ahead and listen to my episode as it sounds now, I just hit preview episode and it'll play through it for me. Um, let's say there was a, um, you know, I was recording my audio and I got a little rambly for a while and I wanna edit that out. Or my cat came in and meowed really loud and I don't know why I would wanna edit that out, but let's say I did. Um, you can always just click on your audio file either here or here, the additional option. Um, once it's added to your episode, you can always delete um, uh, audio from your library. Once you have it in your episode, you can go to edit audio, and then you can use this to split it into different segments. So if I wanted to cut out part of my uh, track, I could do that really easily. Um, and then you can either cancel it or save it, right? Um, let's see, there's so much to share, but I think that's essentially what I wanted to show you for using Anchor now. Um, after you've done editing, you should always save your work, right? So save your episode. When you save your episode, it'll give you the opportunity to update your title or update your description. And then when you're all set, you're ready to go, you just hit the publish now button. Um, and then Spotify will cue you to add some cover art that'll also let you know about sponsorships. Um, so it is possible to monetize your podcast through Anchor. Um, Anchor will pair you with a company, you record their ad in your own voice um, and you get paid for it. I've never tried that. Um, if you're making a podcast for a class project, Maybe that's not an option you want to do, but if you're actually trying to make this be a podcast and you want to get out and grow a large audience for um, monetizing can be useful. If you want to keep it ad free, you can also ask your listeners for support um, by using Patreon, for example. So that is the joys of Anchor. Um, what I'd like to do now is welcome our student panelists. I'm really excited to hear today. We have um, three students joining us today. Um, Sarah Kramer. Sarah took my um, rock and roll class, MUFL 308, in fall 2019, way back in the day, it feels like. Um, we have John Ayosefa, who's taken two of my music classes. With John um, took world music and music history, spring, 20, spring 2020. Yeah, the years are getting mixed up. Um, and then we have Cynthia Rowland. Cynthia also took two of my classes. Hey, Cynthia. Um, Cynthia took world music and music history with me as well. So Sarah was part of a group um, that did a podcast about Johnny Cash. And John was part of a, two groups that did podcasts. Hey, Sarah. 
um, on Salsa and Art Song, and since you did a podcast on Puerto Rican Sena, and also podcast on Art Song. Um, so welcome. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so we can all see you. Great. Um, Hi. How's it going? Great. Yeah, it's, uh, it's good to see you, Cynthia. Cynthia, was, um, we were actually in the same Art Song podcast. Yeah, it's good to see you, too. Reunion. Hi, Sarah. I haven't seen you in a year. It's so good to yeah, see it's you. been a long time. <laughs> <laughs> a long time. Yeah. Oh, this is great. Um, cool. So what I was hoping we'd kind of do with this little panel um, is kind of learn about your process of making podcasts, right? So when you came into my class and I told you that you were going to make a podcast as a final project, um, what were your first thoughts? What did you think about it? Panic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, I actually uh, didn't go the anchor route. I tried to use anchor at first, but then um, I uh, actually switched to audacity. And um, I can, if you like, I can show you exactly why I did that. <laughs> um, there were yeah. things that uh, anchor uh, did uh, really well. And I love the uh, library. I wish I had access to all those cool little transition and sound effects and that um, that anchor provides, but um, I just couldn't, um, I couldn't figure out how to put it <laughs> uh, into Audacity. But uh, Audacity gave me a, uh, a greater level of control that anchor didn't. So um, if you don't mind, I, I'll, uh, I'll share my screen and show you exactly what I mean by yeah. that. Yeah. So John is a music major um, at, at, here at CRC and has quite a bit of experience already with audio production. So, yeah. so this is exactly. from, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so this is from my, uh, from Dr. Beebe's uh, world uh, music class. Um, my group chose the topic of New York salsa. Um, however, in the, uh, from the get go, I couldn't, have um, music be under the dialogue where I wanted it to. So uh, I'll just play the very beginning. This is what Hi, I wanted to hear. Hi, my name is Danielle Cardenas. Hi, my name is John Yosefa. Hello, my name is Melanie Diaz. And today we're talking about New York Salsa. So what I really wanted to do is have this really cool uh, track underneath it, which is this. But what um, the problem I had with Anchor is that I couldn't choose when to start the dialogue. And so um, I could select background music, but the dialogue, you had to like perfectly time it. So I didn't have that uh, modular movability that I wanted to do in Anchor. And so what I did was I brought it into Audacity. And um, when you play them together, it's OK, but you can't really hear the voices. Hi, my name is Danielle Cardenas. Hi, my name is John Yosefa. So if you do this in Anchor, Anchor will automatically do what's known as ducking. Um, in the audio engineering world, ducking is they will use a compressor to compress the sound that's not important. You hear ducking all the time. Every time you watch a news station, you go to a field reporter and the, the uh, environment and atmosphere sound is automatically ducked when um, uh, when the reporter is talking. So what you can do in Audacity is you can take this little tool right here and um, I'm, I'm gonna just gonna grab it, the, this file, and I'm gonna make it super tiny so that we can hear, we can still hear it, but um, you're going to hear the, um, the voice is a lot better. Hi, my name is Danielle Cardenas. Hi, my name is John Yosefa. Hello, my name is Melanie Diaz. And today we're talking about New York Salsa. Right, and so um, it, it makes it a lot more clear and it allowed me to actually overlap um, uh, audio um, so I, I could 
create my own transitions because I didn't have access to Anchor's awesome library of transitions. <laughs> so um, for example, we just went right into our first topic. So today I want to talk about the history of New York salsa. From 1940. Right. And so um, this allowed me, uh, let's see, uh, allowed me to uh, talk about the, um, the actual music makeup of what makes salsa salsa. And so for our example, we'll use Quitate de la Via Perico performed by Tolu. First, our intro. We're going to start by mixing the son clave and the piano guajeo. Just for fun, we're going to let the bass play the guajeo with the piano. Then we will add timbal and maracas to flavor. And then lastly, we'll add the horns monias and have the bass player switch to their own bass tumbao. And then you can see that the next time that I talk down here, um, I ducked again the audio um, so that the audio is continuously playing, but I could actually talk about it without stopping the song. So th that was my experience. I used Audacity as opposed to uh, Anchor, but I actually love Anchor. So <laughs> I still highly recommend Anchor. Thanks, John. Yeah. I, um, and that's really great. And then thank you for sharing how the audio files and demonstrating how to do that. I think um, Anchor is really great when you're coming to the project and you haven't used, um, haven't done any digital audio work before. Um, but if you do have that background and you want, like, like your group did, to, like really get it exactly what you have in mind, then Audacity can give you that flexibility. Yeah. Awesome. And, um, welcome to Sarah and, and Cynthia. Um, Sarah, you were in my rock class. I don't remember your major. Could you remind me? I'm a communications major. Right. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. So Sarah and group in my um, intro to music rock and roll class made an awesome podcast about Johnny Cash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a little bit about your experience? How did it go for you? Well, at first, we didn't understand the directions. I remember that. And uh, we were going to pick three music artists to do a podcast about. And then uh, once you explained it again, we realized, oh, that's definitely not going to work out. So um, luckily, we had just learned about Johnny Cash in your class. And we realized that um, each, one, each one of us um, had some kind of general idea who he was. And we knew a lot about his music. And so that it was more like a, we, we were interested in the subject we were talking about. So that made it a lot more easier to research and it just made it a much more fun experience overall. Um, I remember that we each uh, uh, created like a, a Google Docs account and shared it. So everyone was kind of like putting in their information, doing their own thing, but it was like everyone could see everyone was working on what they needed to do. And um so that really, really helped. Um, I, I, I am not a technology person. So luckily, uh, one of my group mates was, and she handled, um, she handled all the recordings and everything and all, and pieced it all together. And it, it, it really did turn out really great. So I was really, really happy about that. I'm glad you're here. You can make it. And Cynthia. You took two of my classes. If you got a punch card, you'd have two punches. <laughs> and Elisa Vivi class punch card. Um, what was your experience like making podcasts? My experience was similar to Sarah in that um, I am not technology uh, proficient. And I, um, but my role, what I created a job for myself, and it was kind of like a project manager um, with one of my groups. And um, so I just kind of kept the group flowing with um, the emails. We created the Google Docs and um, we, we double communicated. We um, communicated in the Canvas email and 
the Google Docs because, you know, just I was just trying to keep everybody um, aware of what was going on. Um, my experience was also that as a group, we really needed to communicate, come together and have a plan, figure out what the plan was and um, everybody, you know, decide, okay, I'm gonna cover the introductory information because when you study, um, a topic a lot of time there could be overlap and then you know we kind of discovered that kind of too late because we were in one of my groups we discovered it late that there was a lot of overlap but we just went on and with the podcast but you know communication is very very important and so i was um my role was kind of being pushy and okay you know we said we were going to do this at this time hello, where is your, 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 your script? So that was my role. And, and to find each, each of the group members, everybody has a strength. Everybody has a job to do and can do a job. And so, you know, we just had to be creative to see who had what skills. And we had our techie person in our group. And so we, we did, everything well they had to do their part of their script but we relied on that person to do their technology piece and um so that was it was a wonderful experience working with everybody and it's um you know you get to know your classmates more than just you know in the zoom room or sitting next to them in class so that was a great experience as well just kind of getting to know people and working with them so that was my experience. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, question for all three of you. What advice would you have to someone who's decided today that they wanna try making their own podcast, either as a personal project or maybe they're in one of my classes this semester and they're thinking, you know, it'd be a really fun, creative project to do. Um, what advice would you have for someone just embarking on that journey? Uh, for me, for um, the group that Cynthia and I did together, um, outlining was key. So that was, you know, who's going to speak first on what topic, who's going to speak next on what topic, and then who's going to speak uh, last on, on what topic. And so um, having that outline, that plan that, that allowed us to, to uh, easily put the podcast together, because that made, when I, um, when I put, uh, I did the audio engineering work together, um, because we had that plan, I could just constantly look at the plan and say, okay, this is what happens next. And then this, and that, that made our podcast sound very smooth. It had a good rhythm. And so I, uh, the plan is <laughs> make a plan, follow your plan. <laughs> I'm picturing the plan with capital letters, like capital T, capital T, the plan. <laughs> my, my advice would be to uh, not procrastinate and just, um, Ditto John with the plan that that's a big um, thing for me is to have a plan and um, not procrastinate just get in there and do your research you know if that requires you to uh, do the help videos on anchor or YouTube um, find your resources and and don't procrastinate just do it just set a goal I'm going to take one half hour this day and I'm going to research how to do my podcast because that's important to me and I want to know how to do it and I want to get started. So don't procrastinate, get that plan in place and take a step. I love that. Take the step, take that half hour to do it because it's important to you. Yeah. Now, what about you, Sarah? What would your advice be? Definitely pick a topic um, that you have some sort of interest in, whether it's something that you are totally familiar with or something that you are, you know, oh, I, I've heard of this and I don't really know what it's about, but I'm really interested in learning more about it. That makes it, uh, that makes your project so much more, I wouldn't say easier to do, but so much more enjoyable and it feels less like an assignment and more like I'm gaining some knowledge about something that's gonna, you know, make me more knowledgeable. And um, like, okay, 
So when we picked Johnny Cash, I uh, wasn't so interested in like, you know, his earlier uh, success in his uh, career. I was more interested in his legacy and his um, contrib like how did he contribute to the music world? What did he leave behind? That's the part I focused on. So I was like the end of the podcast and that interested me uh, personally. So definitely find something that's gonna, um, that you're gonna be interested in because it will motivate you and it will make it a lot, it will make it a much more smoother um, project to do. Great advice for podcasts and in life. <laughs> Kristen has got all your passion. Yeah, I have a, a question about uh, for, for the participants. Um, I, it, this is so very helpful on, on so many levels. And I, I'm just wondering, as you were um, researching and really digging down deep into your topics, um, how, how closely did you follow your plan? Or did you start to uh, discover things that perhaps led you down a different path or maybe... Um, where you decided you needed to kind of change it a little bit based on kind of what you were interested in and what you discovered. I wonder if you could speak to that a little bit. I can. Um, I specifically chose the introduction because I, I figured that would be pretty easy <laughs> to, you know, um, and on Plena music, you know, like the historical background, I just knew that that I could extract that probably pretty easy and then that so that was my focus i i wanted something i don't want to say easy but i did want something easy and that was kind of selfish for me and i knew that that would be easy information to gather and i researched different um you know the different resources that were available in the library and I really appreciate and encourage the other students to use the, the library um, assistance that's provided and do your bibliography as you go and read those, um, as you read your articles, do your bibliography right then and there. Um, but my section that I worked on um, was very, um, historical. Then the other podcast that I worked on, um, I was not in class the day that the different parts were given out. So I was just, hey, we thought this would be good for you to work on. So I just jumped in there and and um, did my research on my thing. And I it just took me all kind of roads um, studying about my person that I did the information on. So it was just me trying to dig out and extract and give the most important um, points about the person that I researched. So that was, it was just difficult for me to just hone it in. It was just so much juicy stuff about this person. So that was my experience. Yeah. So actually I was going to talk about that. Um, Cynthia and I were on that same project. Um, that was our arts Songs project. Cynthia covered George Walker, the first African-American to ever win a, a Nobel prize for music. Um, or, and I, <laughs> and it was for his art song called Lilacs. Um, and, uh, and it, uh, uh, it was a wonderful presentation. So what I found was the outline still say, stayed the same, but the actual content was a little bit fluid as far as what we chose to actually put in the um, in the podcast versus um, like, well, that one's not necessarily information. We're currently at 30 minutes for what was supposed to be a 12 minute podcast. So, <laughs> you know, let's see where we can cut some of that. But um, uh, no, there was, uh, there was so much good information. So, um, it, the what was fluid about the plan was is choosing what uh, goes in and and what doesn't, and so the actual content changed. Uh oh, <laughs> I'm getting recording, recording, not recording. So yeah, so being fluid um, for, uh, for the content while sticking with being rigid with the plan. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. It really does. Anyone else has any questions for our panelists?
please go ahead and ask them in the chat or in the question and answer. Uh, it can be a question for our panelists or if you just have general questions about using Anchor or general questions about building a podcast. Um, while folks are formulating their questions and adding them into the chat, um, I have a question for you all too. Um, now, Sarah, we were, um, you were working on your podcast and we were still meeting in person back in fall. <laughs> um, and Cynthia and John, we were meeting in person and then we had to switch to moving online, right? Um, which was tough. Um, so did you have to, you know, kind of change your plan to be coordinating remotely as a group? And if so, um, what advice would you have for students now who are thinking about making a podcast and they maybe want to work with a partner or with a small group, but they're not sure what that might look like um, socially distanced? So sorry, for, if you have ideas too, chime on in. <laughs> so for uh, for the projects that um, I was the audio engineer on, um, we decided to um, we decided to record here in Zoom, uh, <laughs> but all of the uh, video conferencing has that. You can do it in Zoom, you can do it in WebEx, you can do it in uh, Microsoft Teams or Google Meet. All of them have a recording feature, and so um, it's in Zoom when you finish the uh, meeting, then it populates all the video files as well as the audio, audio files. And so um, that made it really easy to, you know, chop up the audio files and, and or put it into uh, Audacity and chop up all the audio files. So that was uh, made it extremely easy to uh, uh, create the individual files. You can start and stop a recording in Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, and so that created every time you started a new recording, um, just by pressing that record button, it create it started a new file. So if I was recording Cynthia, then I would start, and then she's like, "Okay, I'm done with this block," and so I would stop recording. Okay, so I'm going to talk about George Walker's life, and then so I would start the recording. It's like, okay, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start talking about George Walker's uh, uh, composition lilacs. I was like, okay, I'll start the recording, and that way it created multiple files that I can import easily and I can move around. I didn't have to actually break it apart, uh, break apart one gigantic file. So um, Zoom is a great option. Um, and if you stay within 40 minutes, <laughs> you're fine. Um, and it, even if you don't stay within 40 minutes, you can just create another meeting for everybody to rejoin. And I'll add that if you're in my class and you want to do that, just let me know. I'll make a Zoom meeting for you, and then I'll make you the host, and then I'll leave, and then you and your classmates can use it as long as you need to to record if you need longer than 40 minutes. Okay. To answer your um, question too, Professor, um, yeah. I know I was in person, so I might not have too much to give on this, but um. I, uh, we, my group was unable to meet up and actually record um, our podcast mm -hmm. together because um, I was a student athlete and my other group mates had work. So our schedules were really, really busy. We didn't find time to actually get together. But what, um, what our tech person had us do was she said, that's okay, record your own individual um, scripts on your own time. Here's my email email me the recorded voice memos and there is an app on our phones that we had and um, we sent them to her and she she worked her magic and um, she said she was texting each one of us separately um, I need to cut some of this out where what parts can I start trimming down because you know it was only a certain length that needed to um, go in and uh, that's what we did. So I don't, um, if that's, that's another option that people could probably do too. Um, if you don't, if you really don't have time or, uh, you know, you're worried about meeting up because I, my group, we just couldn't make that work. A great point there. Yeah. Even when we can meet in person, sometimes schedules don't allow it. Yeah. And if you had told me that I, when I heard your podcast, it, didn't sound like it was a bunch of different files. I mean, it flowed together so easily. Yeah. I think one thing I'm seeing from this is is just how how much easier this is than I, I thought it would be to put together. Um, and this has really kind of helped to demystify it. 
and the the anchor in particular that just seems very intuitive um i think at this point so um i i think it's great that we've had this opportunity to kind of see how this has been put together and then hear different people's perspectives from it i i, I think this has been wonderful really great thank you so much john and cynthia and sarah for joining us today and for sharing your insights i know sometimes um students feel intimidated by a podcast but then when you hear how someone else did it it's really inspiring um so thank you also it's just really nice to see you i miss having you all in class please come mm -hmm. take another music class with me um yeah thank you so much i um if anyone has questions please go ahead and chat them. Um, I'm just going to share my last slide because there's just one last thing I want to share with everyone. Um, so first of all, huge big thank you to everyone who is here today. Thank you to the panelists. Thank you to attendees. Um, please join us next week in the studio. It's going to be really great. Um, Gabriel's going to drop a link in the chat to more information about our guests next week. We have Jennifer Reason and Kevin Doherty from Capital Radio. It's going to be great and very on theme podcast and radio. Um, also, if you're not yet, please follow CRC Music on social media. Um, we're music at CRC. If you have any questions later on about this presentation, or if you would like a copy of the slides I shared today, I'm happy to share them with you. Um, go ahead and send me an email. It's bbl at crc.losrios.edu. Um, yeah, and thank you so much. Thank you, Lisa, for, for giving this incredibly helpful talk. We really appreciate it. Oh, it's so great to see you all. All right. Cool. Bye. See you all next Friday. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you.